Golf Smarter, number 606, is brought to you by MyBookie.ag, who invites you to watch your favorite games and start making money. And by 8sleep.com. How are you sleeping these days? Life, news, family, three putts, all keeping you awake at night? You know that the problem keeping you up at night may be as simple as your mattress. That's why you need to know about 8 Smart Mattress. It's the same price, same comfort, and the reviews are just as good as those best beds in a box. But there's a big difference you won't find anywhere else. The 8 Smart Mattress actually helps improve your sleep with cutting-edge tech features. The 8 Smart Mattress comes with three features that blow my mind. Sleep tracking, a smart alarm, and my favorite feature ever introduced to a good night's sleep, Wi-Fi enabled bed warming. The 8 Smart Mattress is only $699 and is the best mattress deal you'll find because of their remarkable technology. But is that too much? Then let me get you a better price because you're a Golf Smarter listener. How about $599? Now you're paying $100 less than the other guys, getting a better mattress, added technology, and the comfort of knowing that tonight you'll sleep better than you have in a while. Go to 8sleep.com slash golfsmarter and use the code golfsmarter, one word, and you'll get free shipping. And if you're not completely satisfied, you'll also receive free returns. If you know someone who's looking for a new, better mattress, then let them know that we can save them $100 on a great mattress. Just click on the direct link in this episode's show notes or go to 8sleep.com, E-I-G-H-T, spell it out, 8sleep.com slash golf smarter, and make sure you write in golf smarter at checkout to redeem their generous offer. Okay, Joe, let's kick off some theme music. Welcome to The Zone. Tips and insights on how to achieve peak performance with Scott Ford. This is Golf Smarter. Sharing stories, tips, and insights from great golf minds to help you lower your score and raise your golf IQ. Here's your host, Fred Green. Welcome to the Golf Smarter Podcast, Scott. Hello, Fred. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? I'm fine myself. I'm excited to talk to you. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, you come highly recommended from Jamie Zimron when we had her on the show just recently. She talked about doing some work with you uh, on finding, getting yourself into and staying into the zone. Is that correct? Right, right. And uh, even, what, what is it, your website, tennisinthezone.com. We'll, we'll let the tennis go for now. Okay. Because I will later. I I'm, sure it's, I'm sure it's going to become evident. And if it doesn't, I'll ask you later, what, why are tennis and golf similar other than you're, you are the entire team? I, I, yep. There's got to be more than that to it. But, there is uh, more than that. <laughs> <laughs> so I explain to me how you got to this place of being able to define and teach how to get and be in the zone. Well, it, it all started kind of by accident, if you want to know the truth. Back in um, 1978, I was um, hitting with a friend of mine, and we were both getting ready for a tournament, so we were smacking the ball back and forth pretty fast, and we were standing at half court just hitting these volleys, and I was hitting everything late, so I just imagined that if I had this big imaginary window in front of me to represent my hitting zone, that if I made contact at this window, um, I would have, my timing would be good. And if it got behind this window and too close to me, then my timing would be bad. And that just made real simple, logical sense to me. So mm -hmm. I started trying to uh, watch the ball as closely as I could and just focus on making contact at this window. But as I watched the ball, I found that I was seeing my opponent's contact, but I wasn't really seeing mine. It was getting to my hitting zone faster than I could refocus my eyes. Mm. So I thought that's kind of, of backwards. I think what I'll do is just focus on my imaginary window here and let him, my partner and opponent, be out of focus. And as the ball gets 
closer to my window. I'm just going to use my strokes to keep it from getting past this window. Can I, can so I interrupt be, you for just a moment sure, about sure. this window? Because, again, we are going to be talking about golf, but he got there through tennis and convinced Jamie that this works. So um, when you talk about that window, this imaginary window, are you picturing the window? Because, you know, I have like three-point lines when I'm lining up a golf shot. So uh, I'll pick a target just a few inches or a foot or so in front of the ball and then my third target far away. So is that window like right in front of you or is it over the net or does it not matter? It's, it's about arm's length away from me, Got in it. front of me. Okay. Because that's literally, that would be the front side of my contact zone. Okay. And it gives me kind of a visual representation of it. So that if I was keeping the ball from getting past this window, then my contact would be occurring at the front side of my contact zone. And that, that would be considered positive contact. Okay. If it got behind the window and I was hitting the ball late, that would be considered negative contact or negative timing. And that was just basically how I started it. And what I found was that I started giving myself this immediate feedback of going, yes, I, I kept it from getting past my window or no, it got past my window. And pretty soon I found myself going, yes, 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 yes. And I was hitting everything right at this window. And my partner just said, whoa, Scott, what's going on here? It looks like you just got in the zone. And I kind of, it hit me and I said, whoa, I did. And then it was sort of like this huge <laughs> change in how I pictured things all of a sudden came over me. And I said, this is a way to get in the zone. And it keeps working. But to test it, what I did was I started watching the ball again. And then I started hitting the ball late again. But And then, it, of course, my partner said, ah, now you're back to normal. You're not hitting the ball so well. And I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I want to try something else. So I tried this imaginary game of defending this window in front of me. And I got in the zone again. And he goes, what are you doing? Hmm. And I said, well, let me show you. And after he chuckled a little bit and thought it was kind of silly, and he said he'd give it a try. So he gave it a try, too, and started trying to keep the ball from getting past his imaginary window and then saying yes if he was successful and no if he wasn't. And sure enough, he got in the zone as well. Wow. And we knocked 50, 60 balls back and forth just really fast. And then we stopped, and I said, did you just get in the zone? And he goes, absolutely. And I said, me too. And as it happens, this guy was also a clinical psychologist. Oh. So I said, you're the psychologist here. What's the deal? I mean, <laughs> how come we're getting in the zone? And he goes, I don't have a clue. <laughs> he said, psychology and sports psychology, we don't really know what causes this flow state, this zone to suddenly come over us. And he said, but what you've done here, you know, that's worthy of some more investigation. So he gave me some books on consciousness and the mind and all of that stuff. And so I started reading those books and I've been reading everything I can about this ever since. And that's almost 40 years ago. So, but I've also been studying it from the inside by doing it and by teaching other tennis players and also athletes in other sports, how to get in the zone in their sport. Because, you know, where you were asking what, what actually is the common ground of all of these sports and with golf as with tennis it's contact you know you've got a stick and a ball game and the the really the causal event of tennis is contact and it's also the causal event of golf you make crappy contact in tennis you lose a point you make crappy contact in golf you're in the woods or you're yeah, you, know, you you're lose the ball snakes yeah you <laughs> lose the ball <laughs> i've done it in both sports <laughs> so anyway that's that's sort of the genesis of this whole thing and and over the you know the this 40 year period i've kind of developed a a way to teach this in other sports that is that is actually very simple. But I, let me let me rephrase that. I, it would kind of go into the category of simple but not easy. Mm. You know, and and for instance, if I um, if I'm working with a golfer, the first thing I'll do is just we'll go out on the driving range and I'll say, you know, just hit three or four shots and 
you know, I, I, I'm by no means competent in telling them what's going on with their, their golfing technique or, you know, I'm not a, a, a swing teacher or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But what I'll do is I'll ask them, what were their swing thoughts during those four or five practice shots? And I'm, I'm sure you've heard this before, but, you know, there's like a gazillion swing thoughts that golfers go through, particularly, you know, recreational golfers or, or you know, high handicap golfers. They'll, they'll have a bunch of different things that they think about that they will try to think about while they're swinging. And, in fact, all of those swing thoughts get in the way oh, yeah. um, of, of, of your performance. So... Um, what I'll do then is just give them a very simple, concentrative task. And I'll say, let's see if you can, instead of thinking about all of these different things, let me give you one thing to think about and one thing to do when you step up to hit the ball. Now, this doesn't mean you, you, you don't do all of your pre-shot routine. You know, you can stand behind the ball and line it up. You can get your stance and your grip and all that stuff. But when you actually initiate the swing, what are you thinking about then? And that's where people, I found, get messed up in tennis as well as in in golf. So the the one thing I ask them to try to do and to concentrate on is saying now on contact. So that not before contact or not after contact, but at the exact moment of contact, to verbally say the word now. So let's say that the clap of my hands would be contact. And I say, take a few practice swings and, and, you know, try to say now on contact. And what they'll do is go now, or they'll go now, where it's after contact or before contact, instead of now, where it's right at contact. So when they get it right on contact, where they're actually verbally giving themselves feedback that they are aware of that point in their swing, the contact point. Then I say, okay, now try it with hitting the ball. I say, your task is not to try to hit the ball straight, not to try to put spin on it, not to do any of the things that you might want to do. Your your task is to say now on contact. And they, they do it, and sure enough, their shot is just, what's the saying, dead, solid, perfect. Mm. And, and they are amazed. It's that simple. And then we kind of go through what's going on and why that causes such an immediate awareness of, of contact. And it's just, it's simply that. You are setting yourself up to be aware of the most important event in the game, and that's the contact event. So that's how I get everybody started. I don't, and it doesn't matter if they're a, you know, low handicapper. I've worked with some scratch golfers who just really benefited from this, and I've worked with some high handicappers who've knocked off five strokes off of their game immediately. So, it, but again, it's you know, that's on the practice team. It's one thing. You go out and you've got, uh, you know, you're you're off the fairway and you're in the rough and you've got all of these things going on in your mind. The real thing that, that I try to get people to concentrate on is just your mind is going to go through all of this stuff before the shot. But while you're actually doing your swing, if you can keep your mind on contact, you will not let your mind get carried away with all the other stuff. So it's like preventing all of the, the monkey mind Uh, garbage that goes on in your mind by giving yourself one thing to think about you won't think about 20 things so yeah well we've talked about monkey mind for years on this podcast Mm -hmm. because i am king kong of the monkey mind (laughs) (laughs) you should see tennis players are really uh, when i do this with some of the players that i that i work with and you know I'll, i'll have them try to say now on contact and if they don't say now, then they're thinking about something else. And I will, I'll, I'll ask them what they're thinking about. And it could be anything, Fred. It could be I'm thinking about my footwork or I'm thinking about my wrist or I'm thinking about, you know, what's on sale at uh, the grocery store. 
it it's it can be any number of things that have nothing to do with being mentally on contact at the same time you are physically making contact and that's kind of like the whole idea of uh, about body mind unification in sport it would be to have your mind and your body together on this really important event that either causes a successful shot or a, you know an unsuccessful shot. Um, so let, let's just retur- uh, refer to uh, it being the contact event, right? You were saying okay. contact yeah. event is like at that moment um, mm-hmm. it, it, to get you there. And I've seen so many times, I'll see and watch golfers stand over the ball and you could just see the conversation that's going on in their head before they hit the ball because you see little twitches of an arm and an elbow and a leg and a, you know, and a mm-hmm. shoulder. You see all this stuff going on, and it's like, aren't you supposed to do that before you step up to the ball and just lose your mind on this? So uh, what I'm curious, my first question would be, why is it so difficult to do now as opposed to now or now? Well, yeah, for for people who, especially skilled players who've been hitting balls a lot, whether they're golf or tennis balls, what I I'm kind of is it really that difficult to do it on on cue like that? Well, for some people, it's not. Okay, I mean, because they're they're able to let go of all of the whatever you know swing thoughts they might have. I worked with a with not a not a scratch golf, maybe a two handicapper a couple months ago. And he he had a really neat way of of timing his swing. It was kind of a one two three count, mm-hmm. and basically that's what he thought about. And I thought that's really good because it's all very proactive thought process. Where three was you know he was go back swing was one swing was two contact was three something like that. And and but that's a very very good way to use your mind when you step over the ball to hit it but it's it's still a three count is not a one count and so to to actually let go of the the counting for the backswing and the swing and just stick with the contact is another way of looking at it and i'm not saying any of this is right or wrong i'm just saying that if 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 you're not able to be aware of contact when contact happens then something else is getting in the way. Mm. In tennis, we call it a, we're calling it a flash out. Where if if you don't say now on contact, then your mind was thinking about something else. You flashed out on something else. Oh. What is that? Let's try to define what it is. If you've got something that you know, where you know your mind should be on contact at contact, and you've got a way of giving yourself immediate feedback as to whether or not that happened. Well, if it does happen, then you know that your mind and your body were on contact at the same time. If it doesn't happen, then, yeah, your body was contacting the ball, but your mind was someplace else. You flashed out on something else. Hmm. Let's figure out what that is. And it could be, you know, my golf pro told me to work on my wrist position on contact, um, you know, in, in my swing. So I'm, I'm thinking about that. Well, thinking about your wrist is not contact. And so what you try to do is you, you keep your intentional mind on contact and that your intentional body mind, I should say, on contact. And then you let your intuitive body mind do the rest of the work. And when you're golfing intuitively, you're basically in the zone. And everybody who's ever golfed for a long time has had those days or those shots where it just everything fell together and they just hit the ball cleanly. And it's, it's just a feeling unlike any other in golf. Absolutely. You could hit, you know, you can hit 10 bad shots and want to break your clubs and then you can hit that one good shot. And that one good shot, pure solid contact is what brings you back for more. And it always happens and, on the 18th hole. <laughs> <laughs> and then you go and have a beer and you talk about it right. and you it's tell like them how great that shot felt. After yeah. you've broken two clubs and lost eight balls <laughs> and you're just yeah. you're just mumbling under your No, you're you're screaming out loud and then yes. on the 18th hole you have that shot that says, oh, "I love this game." <laughs> you know, I watched the I watched some of the PGA um 
tour yesterday, not the not the President's Cup, but the where they were competing to get their PGA card. Mm. And that you could see the dramatic tension that was involved as these players were trying to, you know, get into the top 25 Mm -hmm. to get their PGA cards. And these players who were at the 25, 26, 27, you know, on the last three holes, it was incredible. You could feel the tension over the television set. These guys were just tightening up or loosening up. It was amazing to watch. And I would think that the the ones who are were loose and were able to hit these shots at really important times, literally in their lives as professionals, you either, if I don't make this shot, I am not going to get my PGA card. I'll have to do this again next year. That's a lot of pressure. And watching these guys step up and take that pressure was just amazing for me to watch. And the ones who were, and particularly in putting, the ones who could make good contact on their putts were the ones who ended up either sinking the putt and getting their PGA card or missing by three inches and walking over and breaking their putter. Hmm. I mean, it, it was it was really an interesting thing to watch. Wow. So when you're watching an event like that, you're watching, you know, top tier athletes performing. Are you mm-hmm. able to recognize who's in the zone and who's not? Sure. No. Oh. You you can. Well, a lot of it is. Do you uh, do it because can, anybody can do it, or, or you can because you're so skilled? That's what you do. And no, any no. You're the the former. Anybody can do it. Wow. Um, it, Teach it, it's really you know if you think of being in the zone as just being in the present. Okay. You know, being present to sure. what you're doing, right? Moment to moment presence. And and really in golf, there's so much stuff done before the shot. You know, there, there's all the planning and there's, there's all the course management and there's all the walking up to the shot and there's all looking at, you know, the different lies that you have. That's all fine. And then club selection and then, you know, all of the different things that you go through, that's all fine. But when you actually step up, address the ball and you do your swing are you in what's called the flowing present the moment to moment present of that swing you know it probably takes two seconds for that to happen i don't know if what the time you know the average time of a, of a golf swing is but uh, it's not a lot of time so you're spending a whole bunch of time <laughs> having to figure out and there's where the monkey mind comes in is all of that stuff that's going on prior to the shot so that when you step up, if you can be on contact, mentally and emotionally and physically on contact, you're probably going to hit a better shot than if you're not on contact. Doesn't mean you're going to win. Doesn't mean you're going to sink the putt. But your chances are a lot better mm-hmm. if you're if you're on contact than if you're not. Mm-hmm. You know, in golf, the, the, you, you always hear the thing: keep your head down, don't look up, whatever. Blah, blah, if you can blah, say blah. now, if you can say now on contact. And you're actually seeing that your head is down and you won't look up. And people have told me, gosh, this keeps me from looking up on my shots, mm-hmm. you know, too soon. Oh, that's huge. And, and I, yeah, it's huge. And, you know, I mean, I've, I've golfed enough to have done that myself. But when I when I concentrate on saying now on contact, I don't look up, wow. you know. I'm not going to get invited to the President's Cup any day soon, but I, I can hit the ball down the fairway pretty straight. And, you know, when I could, if I could ever learn how to read a green, I might even be able to <laughs> sink a few putts. <laughs> but I don't spend a lot of time on the golf course either. Right, right. Um, I, there's been uh, – I'm, I'm blanking on this uh, teacher that we had on years ago, and that's why I'm blanking on it. It was so long ago. But he would he would teach you to – almost distract yourself from the monkey mind uh, as like, you know, when you're, you're standing behind the ball, you're setting up your shot, you got everything ready to go, you walk up to the ball, and in the process of walking up to the ball and making contact all the way through the finish of the swing, he's got you repeating a, like a nonsensical 
uh, limerick, l- rhyme, something mm-hmm. like, like he a had, mantra. Of some yeah, sort. I yeah. mean, he had me saying, um, "Mary had a little lamb. I wish I had one too." Mary had a little mm-hmm. lamb. I wish I had one too. Um, you know, as a, mm-hmm. how'd that it, work for you? Uh, well, it, you know, when I remember to do it, it it, it did kind of work because it emptied out my head. But what you know, yeah. that felt like he was telling you to stop thinking and yours is like total focus um and are we saying Mm -hmm. when we do the now on contact our contact event are we saying it to ourselves are we saying it uh, just loud enough for ourselves to hear it are we saying it loud enough to people in the fairway to hear it you can do it any of those ways as long as you're doing it you know and on the practice tee i have people say it out loud so i can hear it at the same time yeah of course they're doing it and then they can hear it as well because it's it's amazing how they'll hit the shot and then they'll look up and see if it's any good and they'll go now and go no oh. no, 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 no. no 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 <laughs> you know even I that's, know that. that's not yeah <laughs> and and so it's it's like it takes a little practice to actually be able to do this and of course better players are going to be able to do it sooner and more often mm-hmm. than lesser players but it helps both the better player and the lesser player simply because they, it gets their mind and their body on contact. And once that starts happening, it's like the rest of the swing kind of takes place intuitively because you're actually thinking about the last point in the swing itself, which is the contact point. And the follow through is important, but after contact, you know, the, uh, Arnold Palmer didn't have what you would call the classic follow through. But, man, did he ever make solid contact. Sure. And, you know, you look at Lee Trevino. He didn't have the, the, you know, some of these golfers who are wonderful golfers, who are great ball strikers, don't have the world's greatest technique. You know, Ben Hogan was one thing. Um, Arnold Palmer was another. <laughs> you know, their swings did not look at all alike. And right. you take your local, uh, you know, 18 handicapper and go out and they're they're – their technique could be horrendous, and yet they can come up and hit positive contact and, and really hit a good shot once in a while. Mm. So if you can help them to be on contact more often, even with their crappy technique, they're going to play a better round of golf, and they're going to have a lot more fun. And and in the end, you know, I'm, I mean, I, I play golf for fun. I don't know. I like to have fun when I play golf, so I don't put a lot of pressure on myself. But I really try to do this. And when I do this, I, I play better and I have more fun. That feeling of dead, solid, perfect contact is very deep-seated in, in our psyche. I mean, we love that feeling. And when I can get that feeling on a tennis court, that's great. When I get it on a golf course, that's also great. Right. Yeah. We've had lots of conversations about tempo on your golf swing. Um, mm-hmm. and so I can see where the, the now would come in really well for that. If you're, you know, you work on, on your tempo, you were talking about the one, two, three, uh, is, mm-hmm. is tennis in, is tempo in tennis as important as it is in golf? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll use the word timing as opposed to, to tempo. Um, but in, in timing, because the ball coming at you, is in motion and they're like the elapsed time from when your opponent hits the ball to when it gets to your contact zone. It relates directly to the elapsed time you take from when you start your swing to when you make contact. So like if my swing makes contact with the ball at my front window, then I know the elapsed time of my swing was the same as the elapsed time of the ball coming to hit my window. So, I mean, in that sense, you can really, determine whether your timing is good on every shot and that's one of the first things that i teach players in tennis is how to have good timing and then we'll work on your technique so with with golf i'll, I'll generally start with a golfer on the putting green and just say let's get the timing of your the tempo or the timing of your saying now on contact on your putts first and then we'll go on to the driving range and we'll work on your, you know, your high iron or your, you know, pitching wedge and the nine iron, eight iron, whatever, and work your way down to the driver. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really a, a thing where 
the the timing as I speak of it has to do with the timing of contact. Mm-hmm. Now the tempo of the swing, that one two three tempo, I thought was an excellent um, way for a, a player to to keep a similar tempo on all their swings. And I mean that's that's part of the you know the technique of golf that I think I'm I'm really not qualified to talk about you know the swing technique or swing tempo, but the timing of contact between your mind, your body, and the contact event itself, I'm very qualified to talk about that. And, and that's all I'm really talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, so how do we know when we're in the zone? And how do um, we sustain it? And I apologize for asking two questions. That, that, <laughs> that's actually one very long <laughs> question. <laughs> question. I mean, it, sustaining, getting the zone in one thing. You can get up on the on the um, on the tee and, and get all of the stuff that you do to go in and, and your pre-shot routine. Go up, and then you can do this now thing on contact. And for that amount of time, let's go, whatever you want to call it, your swing time. That amount of time, if you're if you're on contact and you're saying now on contact, you will have been in the zone during that swing. Now, how do you sustain that when you're walking down the fairway? Um, that part, you can do any number of things that have to do with almost like a walking presence meditation where you're trying to just stay present to every step you take. And that's probably boring as hell when you're walking down the fairway. But it can also be something that keeps you out of the monkey mind stuff. And I've had times when I've walked down the fairway and just said now on every step. I was laughing and, about that in my mind going, I can just imagine going now, 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 now as I'm mm-hmm. walking down and thinking it was funny. And then you said you actually do it. So I'm probably I've not, actually I done it. Yeah. Not, and, and, you know, at the same time, it it's, it's a challenge. I mean, it's sure. really hard to do. I would. And imagine when I have done time. it and let me, let me, you know, kind of give you a little caveat here that I've done it on par threes. Okay. <laughs> where <laughs> there's not that many steps, <laughs> but a long par five on the veg. Just yeah, right. like so Scott, else. let me I mean, ask you, just, when, when you're counting sheep, how many sheep do you get to before you <laughs> It's like it's like now, <laughs> now, now. Oh, yeah, right, exactly. Or before no, you start going you. somewhere else in, in your mind. No. Um, so, so is being in the zone? Is it a moment, or can it sustain the full round? Can you keep it going, or is it actually um, easier and better for you to just try to keep it into the swing, stay in the moment, and and in the zone for that swing, as opposed to trying to drag it out for hours and hours i would not try to drag it out for hours and hours at all i would do just exactly what you said try to try to be in the zone and in the moment during your swing oh i love that and then when you're walking down the fairway enjoy the view yeah you know and 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 try to you know that's that's when i think it's totally appropriate to do whatever kind of pre-shot routine you do for your next shot so that you're prepared mentally and physically when you step up to hit your next shot to actually let your mind get rid of all of the monkey mind thoughts by doing something else, by giving yourself one thought and one task. And that's to say now on contact. And here's another thing about that. When you're giving yourself a verbal task that includes your body and your mind your emotions, everything. If you're giving yourself a verbal task, that'll keep you out of thinking physically about the task. And it will really allow you to be very intuitive because your intentional mind is set on saying now on contact. Do that and your intuitive body mind will do the rest. And you'll hit shots that are sometimes, you know, if you'd think about them, it'd be really hard shot to hit. But let's say you're you're hitting a, a you're you're chipping onto the green. Well, if if I'm thinking about you know I can visualize my chip where I want it to go, where I want it to land, how I want it to roll up to the hole. That's fine. 
That's all done prior to contact. Then I'll step up and I'll take a few practice swings into the grass and I'll do now. And I'll do now just to get the feel of what kind of swing will generate what I visualized. Then I'll go up and I'll just say now on contact. And sure enough, most of the time, not all of the time, most of the time, I'll get what I visualized. And and, and I'll just go, wow, that was kind of cool. And, you know, because I, I don't spend a lot of time practicing chipping onto the green. You know, I don't I don't spend a lot of time golfing. But when I do golf, I can get pretty good results by doing this. Mm. So, yeah, I, I, I like the former idea of just being in the zone during the swing. Awesome. And, you know, I like to, you know, chat with my playing partners while we're, we're playing. Exactly. And, you know, and just have a great time out there. Exactly. Tell and us about your book. We ins- well, I've got two books out. I've got one called uh, Welcome to the Zone which is tennis centric and it's all about how to get in the zone on the tennis court. And then my latest book is called integral consciousness and sport. And that's um, about sort of the, the spiritual dimension of sport and, and uh, kind of the higher consciousness that you get into when you're in a flow state mm. and how that can be sort of become a, a transformative practice for you because I, I play tennis because of it. I use it as a, a spiritual practice actually. Hmm. And, um, you know, having grown up in, you know, the Missouri Synod Lutheran church, my pastor thinks I'm crazy when I talk about tennis as a spiritual practice. And yet he goes out and golfs every day he can. And I go, well, you know what sport can be a spiritual practice and, and we can really have a, a, a a unified experience with the game um, mm-hmm. by getting in the zone. Yeah, remember you know, the opening line. Thing. I was going to say, remember the opening line to Bull Durham in the Church of Baseball. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and um, there's there's a lot to that. That um, it, you know, a lot of people might say that it's kind of woo woo and new age, but there's a bunch of stuff happening now in the in the coaching community that deals with actually coaching flow and teaching players how to consciously create this flow state in their performance and with golf i would i would think that being able to consciously step up to the ball get into a flow state and be one with contact is going to make you a better golfer and it's going to take away a lot of the anxiety that you go through when you uh, step up to hit the ball. Mm-hmm. Um, and those books are available on Amazon or wherever yes, they you are. can get books? Yes, they are. Great. Yeah. Okay. So last question, uh, and uh, and then we can wrap this up. But um, is now, and saying now upon contact, is that replacing our window, or is the window a tennis thing or just something you discovered and then you've developed it into now? Well, you can, you can put a little – with putting, I like to put a little – window perpendicular to the line I'm putting on and it's right behind the ball so that when I put the window and my my club my putter comes up and it's perpendicular my it's flat against my window then I'm I'm hitting a flat surface of my putter up against the flat surface of the window instead of the flat surface of my putter up against the round surface of the ball so you can set this window right behind your ball and put it on the line perpendicular to the line you want to put on and then just put your window and what you'll find is that you know you're you're not going to hit off center or you're not you'll, you'll have pretty solid putts that'll go along the line that you want them to go on and so I use the window on that. And then in terms of you could actually put a little window down behind the ball on your shots perpendicular to the line that you want to hit the ball on, on the flight line, and then just hit your window with your golf swing too. It's yeah. all the same stuff. Fabulous. And, uh, yeah, you can use the window for that as well. Awesome. Scott Ford, uh, tennisinthezone.com. Any other websites or other places to track you down online? I've got a, an online site called Scott A. Ford, 
com. That's kind of my personal site where I do more of the integral consciousness stuff. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Scott, I really appreciate your time and uh, helping translate this for us into something that we can understand. And I think, I know for myself, I'll speak for myself, I get it and I'm going to use it. Good. I hope you do. It works. And um, it's simple but not easy. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks so much for joining us. You're welcome. Thank you, Fred. It was my pleasure. Hopefully you agree with me that this stuff is legit. It is in my mind. Well, that's why I've talked about it a lot. Talked about the mental games and golf and LP and getting into the zone. But if you're interested in learning more, as Scott has mentioned, he's written two books, Welcome to the Zone and Integral Consciousness and Sport. Or is that Integral? Integral. Integral Consciousness and Sport. And he's provided a limited supply of them for you to have for free. Just like last week's offer of the book Selling on the Green, Here's all you have to do to get one delivered to your front door. Write a review for Golf Smarter. You can comment on me and the podcast in general, or if you'd like to be specific, write a review about this episode or any episode that you remember or where you feel you've learned the most, or write about one of our guests that connected to you. Just let other podcast listeners know why they should check out Golf Smarter. Now, once you post that review, let me know by clicking on the Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com or send an email to Fred at GolfSmarterPodcast.com and please include your name, mailing address, and a copy of what you wrote and where you wrote it. Once I can confirm it's there, I'm happy to send you the book of your choice. All I ask is that you pay for shipping and handling, which is going to be less than five bucks here in the continental U.S. Uh, we do either PayPal or Venmo. Other countries may be more than $5, and I'm happy to discuss it with you via email if you want to write to me, but it's that simple. Write a review for Golf Smarter Podcast and get the book. And as always, you know, I truly, truly appreciate your kind words and continued support. Let's, talk, let's spend a minute to talk about my bookie, the safest place to play. Isn't it amazing how the golf season ended with the FedEx Cup finale, then the new season started just days later? If you like to bet on tour golf, not just your rounds, then you should take my advice and look into mybookie.ag. MyBookie is the industry-leading website that hooks you up for all your betting needs. And with their great odds, fast payouts, and decades of expertise, you can bet with confidence. So what are you waiting for? Lay down some cash and win big today. And don't take my word for it because you need to check it out for yourself. You do realize that where you bet is as important as what you're betting on. My bookie has in-game live betting and a mobile site that makes wagering on the go easier than ever. You can also check out their online casino if you'd rather just play a few hands of blackjack. Join my bookie now at mybookie.ag and they'll match your deposit with a 100% bonus. All you need to do to get that is use the promo code GOLFSMARTER to activate this incredible offer. MyBookie.ag, promo code GOLFSMARTER. You play, you win, you get paid. Now, speaking of the PGA Tour, almost immediately after last week's Safeway Open was played at Silverado in Napa Valley, fires broke out and spread over tens of thousands of acres across Northern California. It has taken lives and has left thousands homeless. Yet now, I do live near the border of Sonoma and Marin counties, but please know that we're okay. Thank you for your concern, but beyond the smoke polluting our skies, we are safe and out of harm's way. Lastly, I just want to let you know that we found a bad link on our <laughs> on the website that prevented me from getting your questions, comments, and suggestions when you clicked on that Hey Fred button. But it's been repaired. Thank you, Paul. And I'm doing my best to respond to your messages, and I truly plan to getting to all of you. So I ask once again, if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, use hashtag GolfSmarter on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook, or click on the bug-free Hey Fred button at GolfSmarter.com.